up YouTubers, Rich here from 2RC Productions. Today we're going to bring you a boat review. I'm going to go over a couple of my boats and I'm going to center on one exactly. And I had put up a post on Google Plus about a week ago showing this boat with a picture of it, hoping that somebody would guess before the video comes out. And no one has yet, but maybe they will. So we're going to do a little review, uh, spotlight on a couple of my other boats, and a run video on this boat. And we, we got something a little different here today at 2RC Production Studio. We got, we got an in-house guest today, which we don't have too often. But there's a guy that lives in my uh, area. His name's Tano Ortega. He is an amateur hip-hop slash freestyle dancer that comes up with his own choreography and stuff. And I know this isn't RC related, but because it's filmed in the 2RC Production Studio, I thought maybe it would be fitting. And, man, folks, I really want you guys to, to show Tano our, your love, man. Show him your support. You know, he's, he's really a, a struggling new artist trying to get out there, get his name out there. He, he wants to go to maybe California or something, you know. There's not too much going on in Illinois as far as uh, dancing. So uh, I, I thought, you know, our numbers are getting up there a little bit. And he had asked me, you know, Rich, I, I really like your channel. Could you put me on as a guest and let me show my moves? And I said, yeah, you know what, the, the RC community is really, uh, really loving and welcoming and helping people out. So... Uh, I want to introduce to you guys Tano Ortega, amateur freestyle dancer, hip hop, does his own own choreography. See what you yeah, think. so what's up? What's up? It's Tano here, man. I gotta show you a couple of my dance moves. Reach for 2RC production. It was nice to let me do the dance move. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of choreography that I've been working on. Hopefully, you guys like it, right? Little JT for you. Uh. Hey, true, bet that up for the track. We gonna take it to the top, and that's the truth. Truth hurts. <laughs> because he was going to do a uh, performance in town here. So he had to leave, but show your love, folks. Show your, give, rate, subscribe, comment. Let Tano know what you think. And uh, I appreciate you sticking around. I know this is an RC channel, and I try, I try to mix it up a little bit, but it's the first time we've actually had a performance within the studio. So I thank you for sticking around. And now we're going to get on to the meat of this program, which is the review, overview of a couple of my boats, and a review and run of a certain particular boat that I think everybody out there should own if they don't have it yet. So, all right guys, Rich here, we're gonna get on to the review. What's up, YouTubers? Rich here from 2RC Productions. 
and we're going to switch gears a little bit here today. We're going to talk about boats, which I have not talked about boats at all on my channel. At all. I haven't shown any boats. I haven't talked about boats. I've talked about flying machines. We've done reviews on flying machines. We've done run videos on them. We've done vehicles, crawlers, on-road cars, you know, you name it. Uh, stadium trucks, whatever. We covered it all pretty much. Nitro vehicles, electric vehicles, and so on. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about boats. And I'm going to show you right here in front of me is my first boat that I ever bought. And it is a Kyosho Jetstream 800. It's seen better days, the paint job. It's a little beat up. It doesn't have the running gear in it anymore. I took the running gear out of it. In fact, I was actually letting my kids play with it. I kind of sealed up the cockpit and let them play with it in the pool and stuff. They were blasting around with it a couple years ago, and now it's been sitting back on my shelf. And the thing about this boat is it's yellow, you can see, but the plastic is still really good. I mean, this is an extremely rare boat that's all intact. I easily could repaint it, clean it up, and put some running gear in there. So this boat was a lot of fun. Came with a single uh, 540 motor, brush motor. You know, this I built this probably uh, late 90s, I'm saying, probably, or mid-90s, 93, 94. So I wanted to show you that real quick. That was my first boat ever bought. And then I've had numerous boats in between. I'm going to prep the next one up here just to show you real quick. This is a Pro Boat Blackjack 9 that I bought for the pool a couple years ago. And I was searching around for boats for the pool. So I ended up getting a Reef Racer 2. Okay? After three of them from the hobby shop, and every one of them that I got that I took out of the box didn't work right. So I had to keep returning them. I finally said, heck with it. I don't want any of these Reef Racers no more. And then I basically haven't bought an Aquacraft boat either because I had such a bad taste in my mouth with the Aquacraft product that I had three of them brand new that were all jacked up that I said, heck with it. So I went with one of these, okay? And this boat is awesome, man. It handles great and everything. It runs really nice. It's a Blackjack 9, comes with a nice pistol grip radio and everything. Uh, but I had this, I got this one season that I had this. I get the cover off here. It's got such a good seal on it. The one thing about it, it has a rubber gasket around it. And this thing, I mean, it doesn't take out any water. It seals up real good. But... One season, and the speed controller went out, and the motor's burned out. And I haven't got around to fixing it. I don't even think I used this all last year. So I need to fix this to get this back in operation. Disappointment. Okay? Uh, the other ones I had was Zigzag Racer. I had three of them. All those lasted like one season and completely crapped out on me because they take on water. Water would rust the motor out, rust everything out. You'd have to drain them like four times running one battery down. You'd have to drain the water out of them four times. Horrible, horrible design. Handling was excellent. They were a blast to run, but terrible, terrible design. So I'm getting myself frustrated looking for boats because I can't believe that I'm buying these boats and they all take on water and they all leak and they're, and they're giving me nothing but problems. And the, and the Pro Boat, which is a Ryzen Abbey product, is an, is an awesome brand giving me problems. So, getting on to my focus today, folks. Some of you might like this. Some of you might not like it. Some of you may have heard of it. Some of you have, may never have heard of this boat. Okay? But this boat has made such an impression on me that I had to talk about it and actually spend some time reviewing it. And we're going to do a review of this. And we're going to do a run video. I'm going to show you outside the boat. And I'm going to do some GoPro footage from it. It is really a unique boat. The coolest thing about this boat is that, well, I would say the most convenient thing about this boat is that it is in a retail store. If anybody has ever ever heard of Harbor Freight Tools, look it up online, harborfreight.com, and you look up electric powered boat or speed boat or whatever, and you're gonna see this boat which is called the Neptune, and it's made by a company, STM, which it's a China-made product, but they sell it on the shelf. And the awesome thing about this is, if you have trouble with this, you bring it back, and bring your receipt back and say, yeah, I took it out, this happened, that broke, whatever, here's my receipt. They give you a brand new one. I had it happen. We pulled one out. The radio was messed up. Brought it back. They gave us a new one. So we have two of these that we use now. 
this is going to be my fourth season with these two boats. And they've been out for quite some time. I'm, I'm guessing they've probably been out for, I don't know, five, six years. Fourth season with these boats with no issues at all. Now, this boat goes for $49.99, but you can print a 20% off coupon on harborfreight.com. You can print it off, and you end up walking out of the door for like $36 for this boat, and it's a ready to run. So I'm going to take the canopy off. This is another neat thing. It's got locking latches on there that you actually hold it up to the camera here a little better so you can see. You can see it has lock, open, and it latches the canopy in place. It doesn't have a rubber gasket on it, and it does have some vents on the side of the canopy to let some air in there, I would assume, for the cooling of the motors. And it does not take on water, though. I've had this in heavy chop, rough water, little ponds in my pool it does not take on water so i'm going to pull the canopy off and show you what's what's happening with the inside of this thing what you got inside here is you got a basic speed controller esc comp uh, speed controller with receiver combo it's a 27 megahertz which some people really can't stand that uh to me you know when i was growing up that's all we had was was you had AM and FM, you know, and they and there was interference. You had to have a different signal, and then you had a big long antenna. And 2.4 gigahertz is awesome. I mean, that's one of the coolest features of new products. But to me, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, so what? It's 27 megahertz. So what if you run four or five people, or it takes on a little interference? Tell you the truth, we run these all the time and don't have any issues. So you can see that it's laid out with two 380 motors next to each other, with twin props. And the unique feature about this is it doesn't rely on its turning rudder to turn this thing. It has two fixed rudders with two props counter-rotating, okay? And what it does is when you get, I'm going to show you the radio here real quick so you see. Now this, this, you know, some people might go, oh man, this is like the clunkiest radio I've ever seen, Rich. How can you want to run a boat like that with a junky, heavy radio that has eight double a batteries in it folks fun factor in value is my answer yeah it's not the most glamorous looking radio it's not the coolest it's not the lightest it's an old stick style controller but you know what it serves the purpose it's functional it doesn't glitch it has a bit low level battery indicator it has servo reversing and power on and off switch with the lights see the two lights on shows you battery and power it's got steering, it's got trim, throttle and steering. I mean, it's got the long antenna, the sword antenna that you can smack somebody with, but it does the job, man, for $35. I, you know, I, it's like I keep getting in this price range between the Airhogs Hypertracks and that kickflip, which is no more. Thank God that thing is gone. But, you know, you got these vehicles that are in a $35 range, and you just don't get much for $35, folks. So... To me, when I can get something for $35 that keeps on entertaining and I keep having fun and the kids love it and I have fun with it, it's well worth it. So there's your radio there. Eight AA batteries, a little clunky. It's actually very comfortable. It's actually very comfortable in the hand and it does the job. And you got your uh, frequencies, but you can change the crystals. Inside the unit, I don't know if you can see that, you can see the crystal in the, in the uh, receiver itself. And you have it in the radio, old school. So worst case scenario, if you're driving more than, I think they got four or five frequencies, you change it out. So what I wanted to show you with the controller is operating with the two motors. When you press the throttle forward, both props spin in unison to make it go perfectly straight. It does not have reverse in it, okay? It doesn't have reverse, but a lot of boats don't. Um, you can turn, when you turn to the right, it will engage the left prop. So you're just turning the left prop will make it turn in the right direction. If you turn the left, it'll engage the right prop to push it in the left direction. And you can just turn it by turning this, it'll start turning, or you can give it full throttle forward, which is the extra boost of power when you're turning. So you basically, it's proportional, so you basically give it a little bit of throttle, it'll ease eh, full speed, and then you go full speed turning left and right, or you can just turn left and right with no throttle forward. So it's very unique. 
being the fact that it doesn't have a powered rudder that makes it turn. It, it just it's strictly powered by thrust. It turns by or not powered by thrust. Obviously, it's powered by thrust because the prop is spinning. But the turning is controlled by thrust also. One unique feature, folks, that and I, I've been through these boats now. Like I said, I'm talking. I had th uh, two reef racers and three zigzag racers in in the pro boat, and then my original boat. Out of all the uh, all these boats, they go with the cooling tube and this and that, or nothing on the motor. This thing here is pretty cool. Built into the drive shaft, you can see that spinning. Built into the drive shaft, at the end of the drive shaft, is a cooling fan that actually blows in the back of the motor to cool it while you're running. And it's got the cover on it, and it has louvers on the cover to let air in there. So when you're spinning, it is cooling the motor. And it, you can completely disassemble this and take the, the drive shafts out and grease up the shafts and everything. And I always maintain my motors. Like I said, these are the original motors. Fourth season going into with the original motors in mind and Ryan's. And we've used these a bunch in a lake, in a pool, ponds, whatever. So very, very cool unit. Now, I gotta find the battery here real quick and show you this battery that comes with it. It also comes with a wall charger, which I'm not gonna pull out, but it's a basic crummy wall charger that takes like 12 hours to charge. You definitely wanna get a quick charger with this. What I got here is, here is the battery pack that comes with it. It's a 7.2 volt nickel metal hydride, 1800 milliamp, but it uses the double A cells. So it's kind of unique. It basically it fits in this little holder here. And, and it has, I put Velcro on mine. And you, you know, you plug it up and you use that battery. And so far I've had the original batteries too. I actually got three of the batteries and they work good. But you can also use a seven cell pack on these, a seven cell stick pack, you, it'll, it will, the, the ESC will handle a 7 saw. I've done it many a times and not had a problem. Now, you see Ryan's. This is the basic Neptune decals, kind of cheesy, kind of, I don't like the color, kind of chintzy looking. Okay, you see the stock canopy there. You know, it's got the goofy colors and then top speed racing boat. You know, a lot of the, the China cars, they, they kind of word stuff weird. It doesn't really, it doesn't really jive. It doesn't sound the way it's supposed to. I, I don't know why they do that. Now I'm going to show you mine. And mine is exactly the same as Ryan's. Same boat, completely stock, but by adding some decals to this thing, and basically what I did was I took some of my miscellaneous RC decals and automotive decals that I had, and I took all the st stock stickers off it, and I dressed mine up with all the decals, and it looks a hundred times better. I mean, if you see it sitting on the shelf, you, you don't even know what boat it is. You, you can't tell. You go, oh, it's got dirt tracks of Vader. Okay, it's got tracks inside it. What, what is it, you know? So I, I really like the way it looks dressed up like this. I have my GoPro mount on here, which on the end of this video, you will see some running video from the GoPro and from the outside. Uh, battery pack banging around in there. That's what that was. So same setup. You know, it, it does come with the Tamiya style connector. I didn't, I didn't mention that. So basically you turn this thing on and then you turn your switch on here and it takes a couple seconds. It takes about maybe 10 seconds and then it links up and the power switch comes on and, and then you run it. Now, one thing we did to these because we run them in the boat and any, anybody that has a pool that's worried about a liner above ground pool, I bought some of this sticky side foam, one side sticky foam from the hardware store. And we taped both the noses because they're pretty sharp. In case we do hit, bam, slam into the side of the pool with the liner, you don't have to worry about cutting your liner. So, I think that's basically it, folks, on the makeup of the boat itself. But I can't stress enough how fun this boat is. It has decent speed. I would say speed is maybe eh, 10, 12 miles an hour or something. It's not a screamer, but it's running two brush 380 motors. I would put this boat in a category with like the Power V from Tower Hobbies, uh, the Traxxas Blast. I've seen the Blast run. This thing is more fun than the Blast. I've seen the Blast run. It's not that fast. This thing's probably equal speed, but a lot more fun. And one thing you're going to realize when you watch the video is a cool thing with this is one thing with the props is they, they sit 
out of the water. They're not completely submerged. So you get a lot of noise when they're slapping the water. You might lose a little bit of propulsion, a little bit of speed. But when I put the seven, seven cell pack in here, and it weighs it down a little bit, I don't notice any difference. It's in, in, in uh, or not, not the seven cell. I'm sorry, the six cell. When I put the six cell in there, the big pack, I didn't notice any speed difference by having a little more weight and the props submerged. But the way it normally runs is the props are a little bit out of the water. So when you hammer this thing, man, it's got a big rooster tail that comes off of it. And if you're standing 10, 12 feet behind this thing, you're getting a little shower from it. So it's pretty cool. And it makes a lot of noise when it's running. You know, you get a lot of noise and you'll see that on the run video. But the other thing is you could trim this boat up. And then from the neutral position, if you trim it up and you go gradually a couple points, a couple points till it starts engaging the motor, it actually will start turning the props extremely slow and kind of choppy and it actually sounds like the boat is running like it's got like a big black v8 in it or something it's camming out it's pretty cool and you'll hear it on the gopro i'll let it idle and it's it sounds like a real freaking motor it is cool so that's pretty cool and and it does run relatively quick it is definitely a fun boat it's never capsized never flipped no matter how many waves I've hit with it or pounded it or whatever, nothing has happened. It's completely intact. So $35, folks, with a 20% off coupon from Harbor Freight Tools. A must-buy. Anybody that's in the boating or, you know, obviously if you got a, you know, a, a 60 mile an hour boat, this is not going to hold your attention. This is more of an entry-level boat, obviously, for the price. For your kids, kids have a blast with it. R Richie and Ryan... Uh, both had them. Richie actually gave his to Ryan. Ryan uses his now, and I use mine still. Ryan and myself run these together all the time. So, all right, we're going to get on to the uh, run video, folks, and I just want to mention one thing real quick. At the time that I'm filming this video, when I looked on my uh, phone, I was at 292 subscribers. 2RC Productions, 292 subscribers. I broke 100, folks, about six weeks ago. So in about six weeks, I went from 100 to 292 subscribers, which is absolutely phenomenal. I am thrilled. And I want to put uh, give a shout out to, uh, first off, Anthony D, man. He invited me to his community, which, by the way, he has a fantastic community. I mean, the numbers are just increasing rapidly on there. And there's a lot of talented guys on there with a lot of quality stuff. And I actually belong to quite a few communities now that I join. And there's a great bunch of people out there, man, that, that I've been interacting with. But I got to give Anthony D a shout out because I didn't even know these communities existed. I'm not a very computer savvy person. And I did not even know they existed. I was just basically doing my YouTube thing. And he opened up a whole new world to me with that. And I have a blast. Every night I come down in my hobby room at the end of the evening when everything settles down and go and check out people's posts and comment and have a few laughs and you know interact with people so very very cool so thanks again guys thanks again tremendous tremendous support and i appreciate it hope you guys enjoy this review pick this boat up and the next half of the video will be all run video
sun. set on wide you can see the whole pool basically it's a 21 round to give you an idea it's a little tight in here with this boat but you can still have fun putzing around so here we go YouTubers, I wanted to explain a little bit what happened out on the lake when we were out running. Uh, Richie went out there with me, and we took both boats out there and did a little blasting around like you saw. And then all of a sudden you seen the boat take a hard hit, and then I basically had to float to shore, which will be edited. I won't have the whole thing on there. But basically, what I figured out, because I had it happen twice, I guess when this boat takes a hard hit, whether it's some wiring or maybe... I, I don't know why. I don't know if it's a connection or what. I, I had a hit that time, and then when I was in the pool, I hit the wall once, a uh, sharp jolt, and then it shut off, and it wouldn't go anywhere. The power was on. It wouldn't go anywhere. So then I just shut the switch off, turned it back on, and, like, reset itself, and it was fine, and it did it both times. So I don't know why, but maybe if something to do with the electronics on this. But anyway, that's what happened. Richie crashed into me, and it actually glitched the GoPro out, too, which has never happened before. Uh, I had actually, he looked it up on uh, YouTube, GoPro problems, and we had to like go through a series to like reset the camera. So the hit must have been hard enough that it caused the boat to glitch and it caused the camera to glitch, which was odd because it's never happened before. But uh, the last one I gave you was just a little pool run, just a couple seconds. And then I want to show you basically what I do at the end of every run. We've, we've cracked some jokes on, on uh, Google Plus a little bit about my all my stuff being so clean and I am a freak with all my stuff as soon as I run something if I get a little dirt on the wheels or whatever when it comes in I clean it and the boat same thing I do a complete dry on it with a paper towel I rinse all the bad water off like in the lake or the pool I basically clean the boat with fresh water and then dry the whole thing and then check the inside and there happens to be nothing inside right now it's completely dry and then what I do after every run I don't know if you can let me give you a view of this I'm going to tip the boat off so you can see what I do after every run is I take my Duratrax power shot which I've talked about this numerous times and what I do is I take a little bit little shot in the motor both both motors and it kind of gets rid of moisture and cleans any debris out that'll be in there and then you take your pinpoint oiler this is electric motor oil and you put a dot on the front bushing and a dot on the back rear bushing on both motors. This is a pinpoint, you just give it a little squeeze, one drop, one drop on the back. And there's your maintenance. And that's what I do every time with my boats and my cars when I run them. I spray the motors down and then I put the oil on them. And it prolongs the life of the motors and it makes them run faster too. So that's it folks. It's This was a long video too, like uh, many of mine. But 
if you watch my videos, you will find there's some hidden treasures within the videos, some hidden conversations, and maybe some guest appearances from uh, certain entertainers, which hope you enjoyed that. And uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, comment as always. Rich here from 2RC Productions. We will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.